right, I've seen a lot of uh, really retarded answers to questions about footwear in the general internet community. So I thought I'd go ahead and I'd do a quick video and explain to you a little bit of my philosophy behind boots and boot usage. So what is my experience with boots? I've gone through selection, in dock, team, blah, 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 wearing ridiculous amounts of weight and um, traveling ridiculous amounts of miles, all the way up to 100 pounds, all the way up to 14, blah, 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 miles per day. And so I felt the suck. I've seen what works, what doesn't work. And um, not to say that I have the most experience of everybody, but um, I think you can learn a thing or two from me. And if you have uh, some good experience, please feel free to contribute. If you don't have anything to contribute and you give your opinion, then uh, go ahead and drop and uh, I'll recover you at the end of the video. So when it comes to our boots, we're going to talk about three things first off. We're going to talk about fitment, types of socks to wear, and then finally leather versus synthetic material. So let's talk about fitment first. So I'm going to hold up one of my boots that I've uh, chosen to use for quite a long time, and that's going to be the Solomon Quest 4D. So synthetic boot, really great boot, love it. It tends to fit my foot really well. So first off with fitment, each boot company is going to use a different foot that they're going to use as a template when they make that boot. So for some people, that boot's going to fit very well because whatever foot they based that boot fit off of um, is closest to your foot. So it's for that reason that certain brands fit certain people better than others. For me, the Solomons fit me really well. Uh, the A-Solos, not quite as well. I typically have to get a wide because whoever, whosoever foot they used was a little narrow for my foot. So again, make sure you, one, find a boot that fits you well, and then two, find one that has the correct features for you. But before we get into that, let's talk about a little bit more about fitment. So first off, your toes. You should have wiggle room with your toes, and the reason for that is that if your toes can't wiggle right there, they're constricted to some extent or another that's going to create hot spots and other things. One thing that that will lead to is in a cold environment, your feet are going to have constricted blood flow. That's going to lead to a greater uh, chance of you getting a cold injury. So it's important that you can wiggle your toes. Otherwise, you're going to have some problems. Also, regarding lacing, for some people, they need to pull the laces tight to make the butt boot feel uh, fit well. For others, you're going to need to have it looser at certain part portions or tighter at certain portions to make the boot fit correctly. For me, I have my boot pretty loose at the very top of my feet, and I have it much tighter at around my ankles. That makes that boot feel really good on my foot. Now, when I say tight, I don't mean like constricting tight, because again, if you constrict it too tightly, you're going to restrict blood flow, and you're going to have a lot of problems from that. So make sure you keep it loose enough so it fits you well. When it comes to the heel of your foot, foot it shouldn't slip out. So if you have a chance to try these on in a store, when you're walking around, if, you're, if your uh, heel is moving around a lot, that's not going to be good for you. If you're somewhere where you can't try on a boot before purchasing it, then find somewhere with a really good return policy, maybe Amazon, something like that. That way you can try that boot and then move on from there. Now, if you're wearing a winter boot, you're going to want to get a size larger. For example, we have the Kenetrek Mountain Hunter boot, something like that. It's an insulated boot. So because of the fact that I'm wearing this primarily in the winter, I'm going to get it slightly larger because I'm going to be wearing a thicker sock to go along with it. So when it comes to socks, make sure you buy a good pair of socks. You should have several different types for the different types of seasons that you have. Um, as far as the material you use, I prefer wool, specifically merino wool, and I would highly recommend that to you. Um, cotton kills, wool insulates, no matter the, the wetness and that type of thing. So I have smart wool socks that I'm, I was issued, and also darn tough socks I was issued. The smart wools are much thicker compared to the darn tough, which are much thinner. So during the winter, I wear the smart wools. During the summer, I wear the darn tough. Now, that's for me because my feet really don't sweat that much. For those of you who have feet that sweat more, you might have to get a thinner sock. So you're going to get a different size boot based on the size of that sock. So what that comes down to as well is when you're trying that boot on, make sure that you have a sock on that you're going to be wearing with that boot. Also, 
Don't wear short socks with boots, otherwise you're gonna get a lot of chafing on the side of your ankles. Chafing's never good. So uh, make sure that you're uh, taking care of your feet there. Finally, when it comes to socks as well, foot powder. Uh, if, you've, if your feet sweat a lot, put foot powder in your socks and in your shoes and that will help a lot of that moisture to get absorbed in that way. Your uh, boots aren't growing a bunch of bacteria and your feet aren't getting all nasty with trench foot or anything like that. So different things to think about. So we've talked about fitment and we've talked a little bit about socks. Um, before we launch into boots, I want to talk about break-in period. Some people said that break it, the break-in period on boots is a meme. Um, I thought people were joking until I've seen some people seriously damage their feet. So break-in period is not a joke. You need to break in your boots. And people say modern boots don't need to be broken in. They do because no matter what, stitching is going to flex, materials are going to compress, your feet are going to build up more skin on certain areas of, you know, based on where that boot is rubbing your foot. Therefore, break-in period is essential. I would recommend wearing these boots around in your house, then for a couple days, then begin to wear them outside doing yard work for a couple days, and then start to wear them for the entire day. And that will be about a week or so. After that, you can start doing some hard work in them. Break them in, it should take you about a week or two. I've seen people who have really um, rigorous break-in periods where they're taken into the shower and that type of thing. I personally don't use anything as extreme as that. Make sure that you are wearing those boots at least a week beforehand in light use. That way, those boots can get broken in for your foot. All right, so let's talk about leather versus synthetic. So when do I wear leather boots? When do I wear synthetic boots? Why would I get one versus the other? So synthetic boots, in my opinion, are probably the best when it comes to hot weather or dry weather. And uh, a lot of these synthetic boots where they're using synthetic materials can withstand cold temperatures pretty well. Um, a lot of them have Gore-Tex built into them. However, what I found is that after prolonged period in UV rays, i.e. in the sun or exposure to heat or exposure to water, the Gore-Tex tends to be not as effective. So what ends up happening is that um, these boots don't tend to fare as well in wet weather compared to leather boots, which can be more easily um, treated against weather. You can treat Gore-Tex and some of these synthetic materials with different types of waxes to make them repel, but I've found that they don't last as long and they don't take up that treatment as well as leather does. So when it comes to hot weather, I almost always use Solomon Quest 4Ds. These are my go-to boots. A lot of people in some very austere environments have used these boots for a long time because they simply work. Now, Solomon's, I'm not saying that Solomon's are the best boots because there's a lot of really good boots out there. You have Obas, you have a Solo. Um, I wouldn't recommend Merrell's, however. Um, people are going to get pissed when I say this, but I haven't seen Merrell's last more than a year. And so some people will say, well, you know what? I use them on a deployment and I'm a pretty high speed guy and it lasted me my, enti my entire deployment. No doubt. I'm sure they've lasted um, long periods of time before, but overall I've seen them not last that long compared to other brands. So again, Obaz, Solo, Solomon, great brands. Definitely stick with those if you have the, cho uh, the chance. As far as where to purchase these boots, I'd recommend REI. They usually have a pretty good return policy and also okay prices and you can also try them on so different things there so i almost always use the uh, solomon quest 4d because it has a high ankle i prefer the high ankle when i'm doing some hard work and the reason for that is if i hit a pothole or i slip on a rock the high ankle will help protect me from rolling my ankle if i have 50 pounds on my back versus a lower support which might let my ankle roll hence why i use that uh, full disclosure i ha did have a friend who ripped out the eyelet on his Solomon Quest 4Ds. It was under some pretty uh, crazy conditions, but it did happen. I've personally never had these boots rip, um, any of the eyelets rip out of this boot, but just realize any boot can fail. Just make sure you're taking care of it. I have jumped at these boots. I've done a lot of different types of things with these boots, and they've served me very well. So these are my typical go-to boots. Another pair of boots that I typically use are the Solomon X Ultras. A lot of people use the 3D A, whatever they all call, they're called Pros. Those are also excellent and they have a similar design to this. What's nice about them is it's almost like a running shoe. Very lightweight, um, has a lot of running shoe type materials on it. And so they last, they do pretty well in those types of environments, whether it be urban, kind of shorter missions. So I typically use these when I don't have anything over 30 pounds on my back. And when the mission's gonna last maybe a day or two and 
primarily be in an urban setting, and these work very well. So another option for you. And again, I'm using Solomon's because they fit my feet well. Plenty of other good brands out there, guys. So when it comes to leather boots, I'm going to be wearing leather boots when the weather becomes more inclement. Typically when it's getting below 50 degrees, I'm starting to get a lot of rain, a lot of slush, snow, that type of thing, I move over to my leather boots. So I'm going to go to a really excellent pair, which are the Asolos. It's a, all, it's a full grain leather all the way around. Excellently made boot. It's quite expensive though, so that's always a concern. That being said, these boots are going to last you for a long time if you take care of them. I didn't particularly use these boots that much until fairly recently. For about the last two years or so, I've been in a primarily hot, dry environment. However, very recently, I was in a more cold, wetter environment. Because of that, I switched over to using these much more often. So, with these leather boots, you can treat them, because what's going to happen is the leather is going to begin to wear. As it wears, um, it's going to lose its ability to protect you against water. So what you do is you use some type of wax. I use Snow Seal, personally. And you take a hair dryer, or you can use an oven as well. I prefer the hair dryer. Put it on high, heat up the uh, portion of leather you want to apply the wax to. Put a glob of wax on there. It's going to see. It's going to eventually uh, permeate into the leather. Get in there. The leather's going to soak it up. It'll look dry again. Keep applying that wax until it no longer soaks it up. Do that to the entire boot. And um, I typically do it after every trip that I go on uh, when I'm heading out to the field for whatever reason. Um, because that wax will rub off, that type of thing, so it needs to be constantly treated. If you treat these boots, um, about after every you know, week of really hard use, these will last you a very long time. It's a very good pair of boots, and they will stand the test of time. Now, that being said, as the temperature begins to drop towards the 20s, 15 degrees Fahrenheit, then I'm going to move to an insulated leather boot. So the insulated leather boot that I use are the Kenetrex. I think they're the mountain hunters, like I mentioned before. So with these, they're a little taller to ensure that snow is not going to get into your ankles. Combine that with gaiters, which is essentially a Gore-Tex layer that goes from your ankles all the way up to your knees, and you're going to prevent any of that moisture from getting in there, getting your socks wet, and then you get hypothermia and die. We don't want that. So with these, they also have a very high rubber toe cap. So one problem with the Kenetrex is they tend to have a separation of the toe cap if there's any type of heat on it. For example, if you're extremely cold, you build a fire, you get near the fire with your shoes, that toe cap's going to begin to separate. So make sure you take care of them, make sure you treat these with wax as well, and make sure you use super glue to keep that toe cap on. And that goes for all the shoes that you're going to be dealing with. But these will serve you fairly well down to about zero degrees Fahrenheit. Below that, you're going to get into specialized Arctic gear. And we're not going to go ahead and get into that in this video, but realize when you're getting to very cold temperatures, you need some very specific equipment. Okay, it's my rant time now. So I've been seeing a lot of people who have been recommending that they get jungle boots because it's the best boot ever used because the military used it for you know, some odd tons of years and then a modified version later on. Therefore, it's the best boot ever made. And um, I think that's bull crap. I think it's a terrible idea. Um, I was issued and I had to use jungle boots for a good portion of my training and because of that, I actually have no sensation in my left or right toes due to the build of the shoe and the fact that it impinges upon both those nerves. And that's, to some extent, permanent. I haven't been able to feel my toes for about three years now. So, I'm sure there's no doubt that the Jungle Boot has served the United States of America very well. And I'm very uh, proud of its service to our country. But there are much better boots out there nowadays that can be had for about the same price. So, if you're really considering jungle boots, I'd recommend that you stay away from them. There are much better boots out there. And I'm sure I'm going to piss off a lot of people when I say that. Jungle boots. All right. So, we've talked about the types of boots I'm typically going to recommend. If you have an option to wear a civilian type boot, awesome. Go with those. Um, if for whatever reason you're going through the pipeline because um, you're trying to become a meat eater or something like that, and you are forced to wear military styled boots, and I'm very sorry if you have to do that, then I have a couple recommendations for you. <clears throat> Every service is going to have some restrictions on what they can wear based on AFIs or whatever the hell the Army and Marine Corps uses to 
um, differentiate what types of boots they're able to wear. But if you have the chance, Rocky S2Vs, excellent. And also the Loa Zephyrs are really good. And I've seen those get a lot of people through different selection courses and different in-dock courses. I'm not saying those are the only boots that have gotten people through. I've seen people go through the, this, uh, the selection courses with these Nike FSB boots, whatever the hell they're called. And uh, I'm not a huge fan of these at all, but people have gotten through with these boots. But if you want to maximize kind of your potential, I'd recommend something like the Rocky S2V. And the reason is it has a little bit more ankle support, also has some pretty good soles, good insoles, and a good lacing system. And that's going to lead you to um, being better prepared to ruck because you're going to have a lot of weight on your back typically. So guys, um, not going to really launch into boots too much more than this. I could talk about this for hours and hours. Um, realize that there are tons of boots out there, tons of good pairs, good companies. Do your research. I don't have time to wear every type of boot that you guys would recommend or that I've seen, um, you know, to the point where I'd feel comfortable mentioning it and recommending it to you. So I know my list is short. Do your research. Um, stay away from uh, those military style boots if you have the option and go to civilian type boots because they're much better manufactured. All right, guys. So final parting, parting words. Good socks, change your socks but every day. If your socks get sweaty, change them more often. Make sure you're drinking water and hydrating. And um, for whatever guys put out that photo of me uh, and called me uh, Gear Hitler, I mean, I guess that's uh, because, um, you know, I'm very particular about gear and black and white about it, kind of like the soup Nazi or something like that. It's pretty funny. Go ahead and drop yourselves and uh, I'll recover you next video. All right, stay cool.